Hey there everyone, Ramesh here back again with another video. In this video, we will see the roadmap to learn microservices using Spring Boot and Spring Cloud. Well, before kickstarting this video, let me promote my new Udemy course titled Building Microservices with Spring Boot and Spring Cloud. Well, in this course, you will learn everything about microservices like you will learn about microservices from the scratch. Okay, so this is around 15 hour course and I will be adding more content to this course in next upcoming you know couple of months so in this course you will learn how to build microservices using Spring Boot, Spring Cloud, React, Kafka, RabbitMQ and REST APIs if you are new to building microservices then I highly recommend to check out my Udemy course to learn building microservices with Spring Boot and Spring Cloud alright well, in Java, Spring Boot and Spring Cloud becomes a de facto standard to build the microservices project. So in this video, let's take a look into the roadmap to build the microservices using Spring Boot and Spring Cloud. Well, in order to develop the microservices project, you should first learn Spring Boot. Okay, so consider we have a microservices project over here. And within this microservices project, we have a multiple microservices. Microservice 1, microservice 2, microservice 3, so on and so forth. And here is a client. It will consume the REST APIs of different microservices. Well, microservices are nothing but a Spring Boot projects over here. Okay, so let's say we want to create a microservice one then what we'll do we'll create a spring boot project and then we'll expose the rest apis so in order to develop the microservice we have to use spring boot all right in order to develop the core microservices we use spring boot that's why first you should learn spring boot okay next let's say we want to deploy this microservices project in a cloud then what we need to do is we need to package each microservice as a jar file and then we need to deploy in a container for example let's say docker container okay so spring boot provides an excellent feature like embedded tomcat server so we can simply package microservice as a jar file and we can run this jar file in an embedded tomcat server in a docker container all right in order to develop the microservices we use Spring Boot. Next, we need to learn Spring Cloud. Well, consider we have a microservices project. Let's say in our project we have multiple microservices. Consider microservice 1, microservice 2, microservice 3, so on and so forth. And here we have a client. And this client will consume the REST APIs from multiple microservices. We'll consider microservice 1 exposes some of the REST APIs. Microservice 2 also exposes some of the REST APIs. Microservice 3 also exposes some of the REST APIs. And this client will consume the REST APIs from multiple microservices. Now this is our uh, microservice project. Now let's understand the challenges in this microservices project. Well, in enterprise application, we may have a hundred and thousand of microservices and we may encounter a lot of challenges while building these microservices. Okay, so consider here in this project, we have only three microservices, but in, you know, in enterprise application, we may have hundred and thousands of microservices. Okay, and here basically this client is calling the multiple backend microservices to get the response from different REST APIs. All right. And whenever this client call a multiple microservices, then this client have to remember the host and port of all the microservices that it want to communicate. Okay, so this is not a good idea or a best practice that the client have to remember all the host name and ports of all these microservices. And let's say whenever we introduce a new microservice in this project, then we have to configure that microservice host name and port in the you know client so that client can call that particular microservice isn't it so manually doing all these things is not a good practice so this is basically a challenge and the solution could be like this we can introduce 
one central component between client and backend microservices and client will send a request to this central component and this central component will route that request to appropriate microservice okay and we can call this central component as a api gateway all right so api gateway is basically a pattern that we can use to handle the client request and route that client request to appropriate microservice let's understand one more challenge over here so if you can notice here in this project we have only three microservices but in enterprise application we may have a lot of microservices isn't it and each microservice have their own configuration file to maintain its configuration all right and let's say we have a requirement to change the configuration file of multiple microservices then we have to go into each and every microservice and then we need to change the configuration so this is not a good idea or a good practice to go into each and every microservice and you know change the configuration file all right so there should be a solution like we can have a central place where we can keep all the configuration files of all these microservices and whenever there is a requirement to change the configuration of multiple microservices then we can simply go ahead and change in a central place over here okay for example let's say we use a git repository to keep all the microservices configuration files and whenever there is a requirement to change the configuration files of all these microservices then we can go ahead and simply change in a git repository and that change will reflect in all the microservices all right to externalize the configuration files of these microservices we can implement one more pattern let's call it as config server so this config server will externalize the configuration of multiple microservices in a central place and whenever there is a requirement to change the configuration we can simply change the central place that should be reflect in other microservices so this is another challenge let's understand one more challenge consider client want to consume the rest api of microservice one then client have to first send the request to api gateway and then api gateway will route that request to microservice one and consider microservice one internally calling microservice two okay and consider due to some reason microservice two is down then microservice one won't get a response from the microservice two and microservice one will return the error response to the api gateway and then api gateway will you know forward that error response back to the client so if you can notice here if microservice 2 is down then microservice 1 will continuously call to the microservice 2 so this is not a good idea that whenever microservice 2 is down and microservice 1 have to continuously call to the microservice 2 so this is basically wasting of resources okay so there should be a challenge where this microservice 1 have to limit the number of calls to the microservice 2 whenever this microservice 2 is down or not available so this challenge we can implement by using circuit breaker pattern next let's understand one more challenge consider in this microservices project we have three microservices microservice 1 microservice 2 and microservice 3 and let's say we have a requirement to scale microservice 1 project then we will start multiple instances isn't it let's say instance 1 instance 2 and due to some reason instance 2 is down and microservice 2 is down and we need a mechanism where we can keep track of all these microservices and its instances so that we can see what are the microservices are up and what are the microservices are down so in order to solve this you know issue we can use a service registry and discovery so this service registry and discovery basically maintains the host name and port of all the registered microservices and its instances okay and this api gateway will basically get the host name and port of particular microservice from the service registry okay so this api gateway will basically discover the particular microservice host name and port from the service registry next let's understand one more challenge let's say client make a rest api call to api gateway and then api gateway will route that request to microservice one and microservice 1 will internally call to microservice 2 so this is complete a call hierarchy right and we need a log information of this complete you know call from start to end so this we can implement using distributed tracing distributed tracing 
so this distributed tracing pattern will help us to identify the complete call hierarchy from start to end okay next few more challenges like implementing load balancing and implementing centralized security in a api gateway so these are the challenges that we encounter whenever we develop the microservices project next let's say we want to develop one more microservices project then we'll basically use all these patterns like api gateway service registry config server distributed tracing circuit breaker so basically we use all these pattern in this microservice project as well it means that these are the basically common patterns or common design patterns that we typically use in each and every microservices project to address some of the issues or challenges all right and in order to implement these patterns we have to write a code manually right so this is where spring cloud comes into picture so if we use spring cloud then we don't have to write the code manually because spring cloud provides implementation for all these patterns okay so spring cloud basically provides a tools to implement these commonly used patterns in a microservices project okay i hope you understood how spring cloud addresses all these challenges by providing different tools or different modules well if you can go to spring cloud official website over here you can see spring cloud provides tools for developers to quickly build some of the common patterns in a distributed systems so here distributed systems is nothing but a microservices project and spring cloud provides different tools or modules to build some of the common patterns so here common patterns meaning these different patterns like config server api gateway service registry circuit breaker distributed tracing security so these are the common patterns that we can use in each and every microservices project and spring cloud provides a tools or different modules to solve or implement these different patterns in a microservices project okay so if you go to spring cloud official you know website page over here spring cloud provides different modules to implement different patterns for example here you can see spring cloud circuit breaker model which we can use to implement circuit breaker pattern next here we have spring cloud config model which we can use to implement a config server to externalize the configuration files of different microservices next here we have spring cloud gateway model which we can use to implement api gateway in a microservices project next we have spring cloud open pane model which we can use to make a rest api call from one microservice to another microservice and here we have spring cloud sleuth model which we can use to implement distributed tracing and next we have you know spring cloud stream model which we can use to implement you know asynchronous communication between multiple microservices all right so these are the you know few of the commonly used spring cloud models to implement different common patterns in a microservices project all right i hope you understood what is spring cloud and how it provides a solution for different common patterns in a microservices project so let me recap what are the things you need to learn to build the microservices using spring boot and spring cloud so first of all you need to learn spring boot next you need to learn spring cloud well within a spring cloud you need to learn different you know important models like spring cloud gateway to implement api gateway next you need to learn about spring cloud config model to implement config server so this model will help us to externalize the configuration of different microservices next you need to learn about spring cloud sleuth model so this model we can use to implement a distributed tracing next spring cloud netflix eureka server so this model we can use to implement a service registry and discovery next spring cloud open fan model so this model we can use to make a rest api call from one micro service to another micro service next spring cloud security so this model you can use to implement 
as security in a microservices project. So these are the you know few common levels Spring Cloud modules to implement different common patterns in a microservices project. So apart from these modules, if you go to Spring Cloud official web page over here, you can see Spring Cloud provides a lot of modules. Okay, so based on your requirement, you can go ahead and use Spring Cloud modules over here. All right. Well, once you learn about Spring Boot and Spring Cloud to develop the microservices project, next you need to learn how to deploy this microservices project in a cloud environment. So in order to deploy this, we should know about the DevOps. Well, in DevOps, you can learn about Docker and Kubernetes. Well, Docker and Kubernetes provides a containerized platform to deploy each microservice in a separate container so that we can scale the required microservices easily. Okay, so once you know about Docker and Kubernetes, we need to also know about the cloud. For example, AWS, Azure, or Google Cloud. So these are the popular cloud platforms. So you can go ahead and check out one of them. So apart from this, you can also learn about you know microservices important patterns like you can learn about saga pattern and CQRS pattern or event sourcing pattern okay so these are the different patterns that we you know typically use whenever we develop the microservices project all right so these are the things that you need to learn to develop a microservice project from the scratch well, if you are new to Spring Boot and Spring Cloud and want to build the microservices project, then I am going to suggest my Udemy course that is building microservices with Spring Boot and Spring Cloud. Well, in this course, first you will learn how to develop the REST APIs using Spring Boot. Once you are familiar with building the REST APIs using Spring Boot, next you will learn how to use Spring Cloud provided different modules to implement different patterns. And next you will learn event driven microservices using Spring Boot and Kafka. Next, you will also learn event-driven microservices using Spring Boot and RabbitMQ. So in this course, you will learn everything uh, about microservices, okay? And in future also, I'm going to add a lot of content to this course as well. All right, I hope you understood what are the things that you need to learn to develop and deploy the microservices project. All right, great. I will see you in the next video.